Women who talk like you die alone. Ma'am, die alone. Die alone. Buy a dog and die alone. You have to be split between arguably your, your career, the rest of your kids. So all you're going to have to offer a man who's at the top socioeconomically is part of your free time. Do you want to share? Do you mind? Do you want to share him? Are you okay with that? No. Loves what they do, fulfilling career. How many different times do I need to tell you? They don't care about that. They don't. And let me give you some examples. Here in Atlanta, I'm about to have a meeting with 30 black men, all who make $100,000 or more. I, I talk to me like this all the time. I have a, an attorney who found his, he's a $10 million attorney, met his wife in my group, and they don't lead with this. You are all about your job and your money, and they don't need that from you. I'm so, ma'am, I need you to understand, you don't know these men because you can't find them. So that means you don't, know, you, you don't know where to go, you don't know what to do, you don't know where they're at. You don't know what they want, and what you're saying is, I hope what I am is what they want because it's all I got. I got to bring to the market. So I'm coming to the restaurant, and I want steak, and all you got is vegetables. I don't care how you season these vegetables, how you try to sell them to me. I want steak, and you're trying to make me a vegan, a vegetarian. They don't want that. Okay. What do they want? They want women who are cooperative, fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive, childless, easy to get along with. They want a woman who's there for them. You have to be split between arguably your, your career, the rest of your kids. So all you're going to have to offer a man who's at the top socioeconomically is part of your free time. Do you want to share? Do you mind? Do you want to share? Are you okay with that? No. Let every man have his own wife and every woman her own husband. Although this 42-year-old woman desires her own husband, I would not presume it's because she has a fear of the Most High God. She should be seeking a God-fearing man instead of a so-called high-value man, according to Kevin Samuel's standards. But the likelihood that she would receive either is less than 2% within the next few years. What Kevin Samuels did not teach was seeking first the kingdom of God. Among the 30 men whom he claimed he spoke to that makes six figures or more among those men you got to ask yourself how many of them are homosexual or effeminate men meaning they represent the epitome of the status quo and its systemic and moral code of conduct okay and in doing so these men help uphold the very same oppressive system that in invented the evil things like feminism, child support and alimony court, the OnlyFans pages, pornography, etc. And that's most so-called high value man. I'm not speaking to every man in, in general. I'm talking about the majority. Okay. This applies to so-called high value men who lead the Christian church as well. Okay. What moral code do these mega pastors stand by? You see what I'm saying? And this is the contradiction that I believe Kevin Samuels, yet he never addressed. Ungodly men make the most money and they, provi they provide or reign over a system, a Babylonian system that produces the worst women. So you want a top earner to accept a divorcee with three kids he gets no children from you and all he gets is the part of your free time for 100 percent of his monogamy does that sound like a fair deal yes in fucking sane to, to someone to that lucky one no buy a dog and die alone because you keep talking about someone and we already established we weren't going to do that but see that's your ego 
You've already established but, you don't know men like this in the real world. You keep talking about that lucky one. Why do you have to believe that that person exists? Why is that so critical to you? I just had this conversation with a friend. We were talking about soulmates, which I don't believe that there's a soulmate, but I believe that there could be multiple soulmates and that there's somebody that matches with me, that compliments me and that I compliment. There's somebody out there for me. And I just haven't. Somebody talked. out there for you, but does he have everything that you want and the income included? See, that's the problem. You ladies, so that's the no. point. And He's not going to be perfect. Stop, stop. You have bought into the Disney Hallmark fantasy of one itis. And you know, and the modern women are the only group of women. Come back into the light, please, man. My hold on, my car just kind of turned off a little bit. Hold on. Okay. The only group of women who believe they should be able to be non-traditional women get traditional provider males, bring those traditional provider males another man's children, and that traditional provider male has to share you with one two, three kids, and a job. And what does he get for becoming the hell of a man that he is? Part of your free time. Absolutely not. And this is why I want, like, man, I talk to women like you every day. Okay? And what I'm trying to get you to understand is this is why you can't find these men. I said it at the beginning of this broadcast. Older women are too difficult. And this is what I mean by difficult. You don't accept new information. You don't accept new information. You just keep hammering on what it is. And it's because you... I honestly think it's because you know the truth is out there. I, think you, I honestly think you ladies really know the truth and it terrifies you. Because you know that once your kids leave... You know who you are, and you know what your lifestyle is. You know who you are and what matches with that. And it looks like alone at the end. I don't believe that. I believe God has that one for me. I really do. Well, don't put my God into this because you're not living, you're not choosing a man based on godly character. And God, and, and right now, there are 600,000 more black women at this level than black men. So God did what? Don't make God your, God didn't do this. And that really bothers me when I hear women put this off on God. God has never promised one woman to every man. How many wives did Solomon have? Now the woman, since the law of Moses, was cursed with humility, even with inhumane acts. If a man raped a woman who was not engaged or married to another under the law of Moses, he was obligated to marry her because according to the scriptures, he humbled her. Okay, so just because there are 600,000 more black women does not mean God still tolerates polygyny. Okay, multiple women seeking to marry one man again was another way of god humbling the woman okay childbirth and her monthly impurity was another way as well okay so satan counteracts that by using esau to create safety nets for himself by providing safety nets for liberal feminist black women that they may compete with the so-called black man who has no safety nets. Okay. These so-called high value men, Esau, they created the universities and campus sites knowing that fornication would skyrocket. Okay. Norm knowing that or abortions would skyrocket. Okay, they created the Planned Parenthood clinics right down the street from the universities. You see what I'm saying? So Esau, he even ensured that it would take four years for the liberal black woman to complete her studies. 
knowing that her body count would only accumulate over the course of that period. And Esau, through the possession of Satan himself, only advances his wickedness through the invention of pornography and only fans page. This is why Isaiah chapter 14 verse 20 says he will never be renowned again. He will never rule over the earth ever again. Once the Most High comes back in the day of vengeance, the day of the Lord. When the Most High comes back and executes judgment against the nations, Esau will never ever run the world again. Because in this dispensation, instead of reigning in righteousness, he said, let us deal wisely with them. Okay, the chosen people of God. And he's insulated himself in wickedness. Okay, so Kevin Samuels is right. She's not choosing a man based on godly character. But even if a so-called high-value man, according to his standards again, chose her, that is likely not the will of God either. Especially if he takes multiple wives in marriage, okay, because women change and women are also envious of one another. You see what I'm saying? So is it even in that so-called high value man's best interest to marry a woman who over the course of time will despise him and only be with him to wait for him to die so that she can get all of his stuff? You see the wickedness there? The scriptures talk about an evil affliction, a man's wealth being his e a evil affliction upon him. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 15 through 16 provides instruction on how the church to deal with the younger women and widows so that the church be not burdened by them. Okay, it says, because some have turned aside to serve Satan. So basically, women suffer the penalty of Eve. They suffer the penalty of Jezebel, the penalty and curse of Delilah, the penalty of feminism. Okay, it's a curse from the Most High God to humble her. This is why more, far more women are in the earth than men. And unfortunately, it is the fate that many women will die alone, especially the so-called black woman, especially those who are in the faith, unfortunately. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 35 says that we are to serve the Lord without distraction. Okay, we go back to First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. It says, the time is short. Those who have wives should be as though they had none. Why did the Most High say this? Because he knew that his other commandment do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Okay, don't matter how much money they make. Don't matter how, how beautiful she is. Okay. He knew that in this wicked world system, that the degree of difficulty to find one who, who is compatible with you and also shared the same belief with you and has not been compromised by this toxic, feminist, Luciferian, immoral society. He knew that, that the degree of difficulty of making everything work, both in the faith and in the flesh, would be very difficult. That's why the scriptures talk about a virgin who chooses not to marry, keeping his or her virgin, okay, that they may live out the rest of their life and serve the Lord. Meaning, if you, again, going back, 1 Timothy 5 15 and 16 was talking about the younger, younger women who grow impatient. And because they can't marry, then they turn aside to serve Satan. Okay, the law of God states that we are to serve the Lord the remainder of our days, whether you get married or not. 
can, because of the ego of the liberal black woman, it's very difficult for her to accept that. Especially if you couple that with the fact that, like what Kevin Samuels says, they have so much competition to compete with, with the younger women. But the church commands that the older women humble themselves and instruct the younger women on how to be mothers and how to be a respectable, virtuous women to their husbands. Okay, so he said, serve the Lord without distraction. Because the woman has always went astray after the serpent. Okay, and God don't want men having to choose between him and his wives like King Solomon had to do. The women who were married to men who had multiple wives in the Old Testament, those women were virgins. Okay, there was a system set up under the law of Moses where God was able to regulate that. Okay. We're living in a completely different covenant now, according to that particular law for men having multiple wives. God does not permit men to have multiple wives anymore because the standard of the woman is not regulated like it was under the law of Moses. You see what I'm saying? There were laws for virgins, even virgins, when they were in their impurity to be separated from the camp, from the, uh, the rest of the congregation, from the children of Israel. You understand? Well, what about King Solomon? Okay, King Solomon, God gave men a grace period from the law of Moses through the time of King Solomon until Christ would redeem man of the, the, the law of Moses under the Old Testament. Okay? So this is the covenant of Christ. But God in his infinite wisdom also foresaw this day that we're in today where it would be opposite of the law of Moses. Okay, where a woman under the law of Moses could be stoned to death for being a harlot, for having multiple body counts. Okay. Or an accumulation of body counts of any significance. Okay, thereby the fear of the Lord begets holiness and a society that produced virgin women. Okay, that does not apply to the time that we're in today. Okay, if you're going to go to Old Testament and talk about what how do you get seven billion people on the planet with monogamy, man? I I'm just saying you can't use that argument. I can use the argument. I can use the argument that we're in the we're in the world. We're in the world. Any monetary system, any system of government, any continent, any time in history, have men in the top ten percent, three percent, five percent, one percent, one tenth of a percent been strictly monogamous? We're in history on the planet. That's the way it's supposed to be, and you know it. It's not supposed to be that way. Yeah, it is. What's supposed to, no, you know, I think it's funny, man. The women like yourself talk about supposed to be, and you're the biggest supposed to be. You're supposed to do your part. But just like Eve was rebellious, you are. That's the problem. It's not what men are supposed to be. It's what women are supposed to be. This is where both of them are right. That she's right that monogamy is the way things are supposed to be. Kevin Samuels is right that women today are rebellious like Eve was rebellious. But where Kevin Samuels fails is not realizing the magnitude of God's curse against the woman for adhering to the voice of the serpent and perpetuating her rebellion since the Garden of Eden. Okay, Christ said, woe to those who are pregnant and nursing babies in the day of tribulation. But blessed are the barren. You see that? So it's the curse of feminism. Again, child support, alimony, all of these evil inventions from Esau. And the so-called black woman adopted his belief systems. See what I'm saying? All these evil inventions adopted 
and practiced by the liberal white and black woman. Okay, so God's intent was to gravely penalize the woman that she may compete with the with her fellow woman for one man. Because you want to date multiple women? And you your think issue's not your issue's not your issue's not him dating multiple women. You honestly, ma'am, the woman I talked to tonight, you'll be fortunate to even find this guy. Cause you can't find her. But then you got the nerve to say something you can't find that you that's very rare. Then you want to put restrictions on it? Well, would you rather have part of him or a whole nothing? So you want me to share a man with another woman, and you think that that's going to be a respectful, like submission, submissive? What, well, I'm tell you what I tell, well, I tell you what I do want. What I do want is I want women like you to understand that you already came into this relationship and you shared your womb with a man three times. A man is sharing you with your three children your job and all of your responsibilities and the life you've built he has nothing to do with that and all he gets for his monogamy commitment and everything else he doesn't get children he doesn't get his legacy that is an unfair deal i would rather this man go get a young wife and start his own family and then a woman like you excuse me because look just like you're proud of your accomplishments he should get something for his too what Kevin Samuel said was mostly right. He just never used the scriptures to frame his message. Because had he done so, he would have explained the truth to women that a true high-value man is one who gives his life to God. Because first and foremost, he gives his life to God, then he gives his life for his wife and children. But he will never exalt her before God. That's a true high value man. Okay, because again, that man can make all the money in the world and die the next day, the day after marrying her. And she gets all of his wealth. Okay, what did he get? You see that? That's that's why you can't well, you can say, well, he if he can die and go to heaven and not have any money then, then what does she get? Well, at least he would know. That was love. Okay, their union was bound by their obeisance to the Most High God versus how much money he makes. Not saying there's anything wrong with money, okay, but that that's not the reason why the woman to marry the man. Now I understand Kevin Samuels was making a point when he would instruct the women to marry the man that they had a child with. Okay, I understand that, but even then, if God is not in the picture, if that's not emphasized, things can always go wrong for both parties. Okay, Satan will always have the upper hand. Okay, and him taking a stance for God, talking about a so-called high-value man, or what I would call a high-value man, if he takes a stance for God, it may even cost him financially. Because the scriptures say, what? The world is given into the hands of the wicked. Okay. And because the world is given into the hands of the wicked, that this is the time of the Gentiles. Okay. And many sorrows are ahead. We are all witnesses to how so-called high-value men are treated publicly. Just look at your celebrities. Okay. Last summer, a homosexual made a pass at Steph Curry's while he was at dinner with his wife. Okay? And his wife, Aisha, checked this guy for disrespecting her husband and disrespecting her. And this homosexual cussed her out right in front of Steph Curry's face. Okay? And Steph Curry couldn't say one word to defend his wife. Why? Because his employers at, at Oracle, they have the largest homosexual fan base in the NBA. And Steph Curry's bosses are gay. Okay. 
Uh, recently, Tony Dungy was forced to apologize for his remarks. Okay, we all know about Kyrie Irving. Okay, look at Dwayne Wade and his son. Okay, he's forced to play the game. You see, these are your high value men. Okay, <laughs> look at all the false prophets who have the mega churches. Okay, those are your so called high value men, according to. Kevin Samuel standard. Okay, so I believe this in itself is a contradiction. And yes, this is the case on the lowest scale of so-called high-value men. Okay, I'm sure they either vote Democrat or Republican. You see that? So they uphold the system, even though they make less money, but they're still within that high-value bracket. Okay, again, among those 30 black men in Atlanta, okay, which is one of the most heaviest populated homosexual cities in America, okay, among those 30 black men that Kevin Samuel spoke to, again, ask yourself how many of them were homosexual, okay? Or their money would be impacted if they took a stand for the most high, meaning they effeminate. Okay, how many of them takes take a stand for that type of lifestyle, although they are not homosexual? That's what I want you to ask yourself. Okay, because these are the pool, again, the pool of so-called high-value men that these women eat. Even then, they still are limited. You see what I'm saying? This is why the scriptures emphasize you cannot serve God and mammon. Okay? If that word is not true, then God is a liar. And we know God is not a liar. Scriptures say, let God be true and every man a lie. It takes a lot of time to study, to fast, to pray, to minister, and be in communion with the Lord. Okay. So that is the loan is going to impact your ability to chase after the money. You see what I'm saying? And I know this from personal experience. Nevertheless, for the little truth that he did tell, it would not surprise me if the elites removed Kevin Samuels. Okay. Because when he did that interview with Nicki Minaj, that should have been his cue that they were after him. Okay, I saw the way that she was behaving. I, I mean, I don't have time to get into that. But his message was emerging against left-wing liberal females. Okay? And you just never know. But just remember that feminism would be an afterthought if not supported by so-called high-value men. And that, my friends, is the contradiction that Kevin Samuels never addressed.